What is up guys, it's Jay here, Jay Media one and we are back with the all new made for Amazon Zigbee Smart Switch. This is the Gen 3 and this is compatible with Echo 4 Gen, Echo Plus, 1st and 2nd Gen, Echo Show 10, Echo Studio, Eero 6, and Eero 6 Pro. And this thing is pretty cool. We are talking about third reality here. They make a super simple smart switch to hook up in your house without any wiring. So we're going to get right into the unboxing, guys. So let's go. Okay, guys, so it comes in this third reality box here, and you got the third reality right here on the front with a nice logo. This is the main box, and there's a secondary box here as well. So we're going to open the main box first. And there's just two tabs on the bottom here that we have to get through, so we're going to slice through these guys right there. And then the lid should just come right off. And this is your smart switch start kit. You can upgrade this with a Smart Switch Gen 3, but we're gonna run this one right now. And inside here we have a USB to a micro USB. So we got a really short throw cable here. That's the first thing we notice when we open the package and it's not very long. Then we also have the main controller, which is this big guy here. We're gonna pull that out. And on the inside, there's these little sticky tapes and then there's this large button right here on the front. And then on the inside here, we just have a couple little slots here and then a slot right, right there in the center. And we also have this box here, which has a power logo, a Wi-Fi logo and a Z logo. And this shows power in right here on the top. So more than likely we're going to plug in right like this. And then there's also another port up here and then we have a USB-C, which is a power out port right down here. <clears throat> we have our power brake. Nothing too special about that. Just a normal power brake, which is going to allow us to plug into here like this. And then we have a bunch of these little tabs with some screws. And it does come with these AAA batteries here. So that's it for that box and the setup kit over there. This is all just a bunch of plastic. We can get rid of all of this. And then we have this little box here. And if you look on the side, it tells you if you slide the cover up with your thumb, then it will open right up like that. So we're gonna pop this tab. And inside of here, we have two smaller boxes, two little boxes like this. And then inside one of these boxes, we have some more batteries. So we have another set of uh, AAAs here. Nothing in this box at all. It's just empty. And then right here we have our motion sensor. Motion sensors are pretty easy to detect just by appearance. So we could tell right away that this is our motion sensor here. And then this, you just slide up with your thumb and that gets the cover off. And then there's two more screws right here. And those screws are gonna go through this backing plate here so that we can mount this. All right, guys, so we're gonna talk a little bit about how to set this up. First and foremost, if you look at the instructions, they want you to download the Third Reality app. So you just basically go into the App Store. You're gonna look for an app like this called Third Reality and you're gonna open it up. It's gonna ask you to either create an account or sign in. If you don't have an account, you're gonna to wanna to create an account first. And it's gonna pop up like this and not show anything inside of the hub. It's just gonna ask you to register to their account. Then it wants you to plug directly in and power up the hub. And we can see here that the hub is powered up and the lights are on. Once the LEDs mark power LED and Zigbee LED will be illuminated and the Wi-Fi LED will be blinking rap rapidly. And it is, so that's all going as planned. We wanna tap the plus button up here. And that plus button is going to ask us to add a hub through the app under Bluetooth mode. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that Bluetooth is on, on your phone. You can also uh, complete the setup under Wi-Fi mode if you want to, but uh, we're just gonna go with Bluetooth, Bluetooth mode right now. Right here, we're gonna, we have the Smart Switch Gen 3, so we're gonna click on Switch. We're gonna click on Add Reality Hub, and then we have to type in our Wi-Fi password. And it tells you that it's gonna initialize it, so you wanna make sure that it's connected to power. 
and that the Wi-Fi light is blinking quickly. If not, you're gonna want to reset it by going into the reset pinhole for about six seconds. So once this Wi-Fi light is blinking rapidly, which we have here, we're just gonna click next. It's gonna search for the device and once it picks up that device, we should be able to continue. So it picked up the device, we're just going to click on it. And now it's gonna transfer some account information and configure the hub. Okay, so it says setup complete. So we're gonna click on pair device and we are using a switch. So it's telling us we just wanna put the batteries inside of the switch here. So we're gonna get these out of here. So if you see how it's showing you how to put the batteries in, we're gonna to wanna to put them in aiming down. So if you see this little tab here, you click on that and you pull this up. You can see the battery slot. We're gonna slide one of them in here like this with the positive side facing down in this orientation and then the next battery in there like that. And then at that point in time, we're gonna be able to put the cover right back on. It's gonna snap right in there just like that. And we hit next. It says if it's not blinking rapidly, we're gonna reset the switch button by holding it down for about 30 seconds. And we're gonna click on next because it is starting to blink. It's hard to see because it's kind of faded inside of there, but it is blinking rapidly at this point in time. And we're gonna click on pair. And it says the pairing is in progress and the LED on the device may change. This is normal, so nothing to worry about there. And once that's done, we can click on complete. We have smart switch one here, which is connected to hub one, which is our hub over here. So everything looks good there. We can hit the off button or the on button right here. And that's going to allow us to control this. And if you look inside of here, what's happening is when we turn it off, we see this mechanism moving up. And when we turn it on, we see it moving back down. So the orientation of this when we mount it to the light switch is going to matter. So we're going to get it mounted to the switch. Okay, guys, now that we have this paired and the batteries in and it's ready to go, we're going to show you how to install it into the wall portion. So if you look here, we just have a normal wall outlet. This one's a double outlet. So we have the four screws that we got to take out of the face plate here. So we're going to start with that. We're just going to take out the four screws real quick. Okay, hey, once we have the screws out, the face plate just comes off just like that. Now at this point, we need to get different adjustments depending on which height we need. And I'll show you how to do that. So if you guys have a rocker switch like this one, you're gonna to wanna to use one of these films and you're gonna to wanna to put that on top of there. So we're gonna to wanna to stick this on top because uh, this makes it a little bit slipperier for it to slide across and allows it to create like a little smooth operation there. So we're gonna put this on there first. It's not too difficult, you just slide it on there and it's got adhesive on the back that should hold pretty good. So that's noticeably slipperier than, than this side. So that's our first step. Then we got these little adjusters and these are basically just spacers right here so we have these spacers to create different gaps and then we have the thinner ones here a uh, little bit of a thicker one right here and those are going to create different gaps between the spacers and the piece of plastic that has to go on there right like this basically we go this direction because if you look at this edge right here this edge is what snap it snaps into and it's just got little fingers that come out here so we're going in this orientation where we're going to put these on the front and then our spacers are going to go on the back side of the face plate depending on how much space we need to leave between this and the plastic piece on the front and so these are a little bit beveled on the inside and so it just kind of fits inside of there and it doesn't really move around too much so it's pretty good so at this point we can get the cover placed back on just like this so we're going to make, want to make sure that we measure and see how much space we need uh, between the face plate and where that gap is. So that's what these are for. If you look here on the instructions, it does show you the different measurements of so 0.5 millimeters to one millimeter. You don't need any spacer at all. And that's basically the rocker gap right here. You can see the, the two lines coming together. Um, right here, we wanna have, if we're option B, which is a little bit more of a gap, basically in between the rocker and where the back plate on the rocker is, then we're going to do one millimeter to 2.5 we can use a one millimeter spacer we got two millimeter and three millimeters so this thing will work with lots of different types of rocker switches ours fortunately is almost flat so when we get this cover on here we're not that far off but if you are 
then it does allow you to put the spacer in depending on how far off you are from being flat up against the faceplate, which will be like this. So when the faceplate's on here, like this, it's basically how much of a spacing you have between this hard area on the outside and the faceplate itself right there. And with ours, you can barely fit like a fingernail. So we're just gonna need a, a tiny spacer. We could probably get away with no spacer whatsoever. So they do give you the screws if you want to just have a single outlet, but you know, in this case, we're only gonna put it over one anyway. So it only, it only matters in this direction. So they do give you a screw, it's a little bit longer, which is gonna make it easier to screw into there. So we're gonna put it in just like that. And then we're gonna put this one on top. Like I said, this is where your spacers are going to matter depending on the depth you need. We're going to try it just like this for now. We get these two on there and then we'll be able to proceed and put the other two back in just like they were before. Basically, we just want to get the one started and then we can get the other one started. We don't want to tighten these down until they're both started. Once we've got those in there pretty good, we're going to go back and put in our regular screws on the other side. Now that everything's in, we can go ahead and just tighten them all down real good. You don't really have to crank them down. Just want to get them snug and give it an extra half a turn, just like that. Now that it's in there, you can see these little slots, these little cutouts right here. And those slots are going to line right up with these slots. And like I said, you want to pay attention to what orientation it's in, because right now the light's on. If we flip this, the light's off. So if this is in the off orientation, this slider is going to be all the way down. We want it to be put on like this. And you basically just push it forward now and it'll snap on. But we have to double check that orientation to make sure it's correct. So in order to do that, we're going to go back to the app. We see that it's on and the switch is in this position. So we're going to want to install it. If you look at the arrow, there's an arrow up here that says up. We want to install it. The position's on. So this has to be all the way up at the top because this is basically what slides down on top of the rocker. And once it slides down, it's what's going to turn your light switch on and off. So we got it in the right orientation now. Like I said, you could check that. You can just click on the button. Off is down. We know that. And if we click on this, it goes back up for on. So we should be good to go. We just have to leave this in the orientation they want us to have it in, which is with the up arrow that way. And then we're going to slide this over top of it. And we're just going to push a little bit and it should snap right on there. Now keep in mind, if you don't get the spacing correctly, you can always pull these back out like this and you can add your spacer to it later. And you wanna make sure that this little divot goes on the inside just like that, because then it sits flush around the edge like this. So if you get it wrong, you can always come back, add the spacer and try again. And you just come over here, make sure that it snaps on. And it snaps on pretty easy. The thing is, is if you have too big of a gap, it's not going to make contact correctly. If it doesn't make contact correctly, then it's not going to turn the light off. And you have this button here that manually allows you to turn it on and off as well. So if you ever want to do this, it doesn't take away from the feature of manually turning your light on and off because you have this button here as well. So there it goes. So we have the correct orientation, we have the correct spacer, which we had to go a little bit thicker with, but that's okay, because this thing's on there pretty good. I mean, it's not gonna come off. Once you get it snapped in, it's gonna stay. And now we can add our other two screws, to make it look nice, and should be good to go. The cool thing about these kind of switches is if you rent a place and you don't wanna do any wiring, you don't wanna have to pull this apart, um, these are fairly easy to take on and off, as you will. You know, if you ever decide to move out of your house or your apartment and you're renting, you could just detach this, take off the spacers, pull the bolts out, and it's back to being a normal light with that little sticker on there. So there's not much that you have to do to remove them. And that's what makes them pretty cool. With the other ones, you have to pull these, the, the whole socket out. You got to wire it all in. Then you got to connect it to the net, to the app. And I have done this. I have wired up an entire smart house this way. And it works great, but like I said, if, if you're renting or something like that, it just makes it a, a way better option. So we're gonna give this thing a try with the app so you guys can see what that looks like. Hey okay guys, we got our switch connected to the hub here. As soon as you open the app, it's gonna refresh. And it does give you some other options. You can group it, you can set a timer, 
You can do 3R protection, and then there's some settings inside of there. But basically, this is telling you your whole setup. So if you were to get, get more than one switch, or one hub for that matter, it's all going to show up here. So if I want to turn this on, I just click the on button here. And you see the switch goes up, turns the light on. If I want the light back off, I just hit the off button. It's going to go back down and it's going to turn it off. So it's pretty, uh, pretty simple design. Uh, but the cool part about it is, is that, like I said, it's easy to set up. You guys saw how I set it up there. It probably took five minutes at most. So it's easy to set up. And if you guys are watching this video, it's going to be even easier because you're going to see what I did. And you could take it off real easy, move it around to different rooms if you don't like it in that room. Or if you're a renter or something like that, it'll be easy to take out of the house and to take with you. And you still have pretty much the same features you would as if you were to install a normal smart hub light just like this. Like I said, it's got that manual override button. So you can just click the button and it's going to turn the lights on. You click the button again, it's going to turn the lights off. So you don't have to use the app, but you can. So if you want to use this for a bedroom or you want to shut the lights off after you're laying in bed, it's a really cool option. You could set up different automations, like when you're coming home, you can turn the lights on and things like that. So it's a really, really cool option. Uh, you do have the timer feature here. So if you click on timer, you can do that. You can add and you can add a timer to it to where you do a countdown or you do a normal timer and then you name it. So we're just going to name it home. And then you select which switch you want on the timer. And then you can select a group and then you can add a schedule. So you can tell this light to turn on at a certain time uh, during the day, if you like. Um, if you go to your time zone, it'll let you select, hey, what action do you want to do at this time? And if you want your light to turn off at eight o'clock every night, it'll turn off at eight o'clock every night. So that's a cool little automation you can add. So it does have those features. Um, the protection just be, means that it sets the system away so that you can uh, you can do like a way mode with with Alexa. You can say arm and then name your system and do that. So that's kind of cool. So it'll turn your lights on and off if you're if you're home or not home. So you do have that. And then in your settings, you're going to have the option to update password and all those different types of things inside of there. Now, the other switch that we got was the motion sensor. So we're going to show you that as well. This is the motion sensor, and you can set this motion sensor up to where if you mount this on a wall, uh, when somebody enters the room, it's going to turn the light on for you. So that's also an, a very cool option. So you just basically with this, you just slide this back panel down like that. You insert your batteries in here. There's a little reset switch in here if you ever have to do that. And then on the back plate, you have these two holes that you're going to screw into the wall. And then you're going to slide this guy back in there after it's in the wall like that. So it just slides right in and clicks. And then this little ball here, once it detects motion, will turn your lights on automatically as well. So there's also that option. Okay, guys, you saw how easy this thing was to set up. I mean, it is ridiculously easy. You do not have to have any knowledge whatsoever in setting one of these up. You don't have to be a super skilled handyman, nothing like that. It's going to be easy for you guys to set up as well. So the description, this is the third reality. This is the Smart Switch Gen 3. It's a simple solution for automating all your wall switches. It mechanically turns an existing toggle or rocker switches on and off. And this does work with toggle switches. You guys saw the flat rocker switches. It'll work with singles, doubles, triples, doesn't matter. Uh, smart switches can be placed next to each other in a two gang, three gang, or four gang switches. So if you have two of these, you can place them on two gangs, three of them, so on and so forth. You can use this with your Echo smart speakers that have Zigbee or with compatible third party. It works with Alexa and Zigbee hubs. So you could say, hey Alexa, turn on my, my lights, and they'll turn on. And that's super, super cool. We didn't get into too much of the motion sensor, but the motion sensor is super easy as well. It's basically the same connection process that we talked about um, when we connected the switch itself. So you're just adding it to the hub, you're adding it to that whole system, and then your motion sensor is going to be set inside of that little area as well. And then you can go ahead and set it up for motion if that's something that you're interested in. We don't really use motion sensors, but you can. And that's cool that you have that option. 
Um, you can customize your smart switch by renaming it and creating automated routines using the Alexa app. You can also create a routine directly inside of the app that they have, which we already showed you guys. Features and details, easy installation. That's the coolest part about it. There's no wiring required whatsoever. You don't have to be an electrician. You don't even have to be that handy with tools. It snaps on top of an existing toggle or rocker switch um, mechanically, controlling everything as an underlying switch. Um, you can turn your light on with Alexa, which is super cool, using voice commands, or you can set a schedule by creating Alexa routines. It's got a wide range of uses because there's no neutral wire required. It works with any voltage, so you can use it with 12 volt, 24 volt, 110 volt, or 240 volt, which is something that not a lot of people think about. You do have that option. It's ideal solution for low voltage switches like those used with gas fireplaces as well. And it's narrow enough to fit two gang switches, which makes it super cool. The improved design is what makes it narrower and thinner than the Gen 2 switch, and it's got lower battery consumption as well. So you don't have to worry about changing your batteries out all the time in this. This thing also works with Aero EERO6 and EERO6 Pro. Uh, Smart Things 2015 and 2018, Wink V2. Uh, third reality hub, third reality speaker with built-in hub. And what do you get? So in the box, you get the switch. If you're just buying the basic version, you get the switch itself. You get batteries, you get mounting hardware, spacers, screws, and that protective film that goes over top of the rocker if you're mounting it on that type of switch, which is super cool. It does make it slide a little bit easier as well, but it's also there just to protect your switch. When you go to take this thing out, if you are moving or you're renting a place, you're never even gonna know that that switch was there. You can get it in and out in about five minutes. So once you get used to installing these things, you should be able to install one in five minutes or less. I have no doubt about that. So it's definitely something to look at, guys. It's only $24.99, super, super cheap. So you can get one, two, three, four, ten. These ones that you have to wire into the wall are a lot more than that. And I've noticed that a lot of them only have the Wi-Fi pairing option, which can be a lot harder to set up than the Bluetooth pairing option. And they don't come with that hub. So that little box that we plugged in is the smart hub for this thing. And it comes with it, which is fantastic because a lot of these switches that you have to wire into the wall, you have to buy, the, buy that hub separately. They will work without the hub, but the problem is, is they don't work as well. They're not responsive and things like that. So you end up buying the hub no matter what. With this, you don't have to worry about that. It already comes with the hub. And as you get more and more of these things, you can just continue to add them to that hub and it's gonna pick them up and recognize them. So I highly, highly recommend this if you guys are looking to do some smart home stuff, but you don't wanna do a whole lot of wiring. You don't wanna go crazy. You just wanna get some lights turning on and things like that. It's super, super cool. The main, the main cool thing that I see with these and what I use this for all the time is your outside lights, right? So you have outside lights that you want to come on at sunset or sunrise. You can automate that. So you can make it so as soon as it you know, gets dark outside, your, auto, your outside lights automatically come on and this switch will flip them on there for you. Super easy installation in, in order to achieve that. So this is a gr that's a great option. It also works great for other rooms and things like that, but I would say the number one thing that I really like this for is for that outside light option because you don't have to worry about it when you're when it gets dark outside, it flips on those outside lights and you are good to go. Other than that guys, if you like this video, make sure to mash the like button. As always, subscribe to the channel, check out our podcast, at JMedia1, check out our website at jmedia1.com and we will see you guys in the next tech review. Later, guys.